Welcome to our webinar today on SchoolNet 20.1. My name is Brenda Aubin, and I'll be facilitating today's session. The webinar will be comprised of a series of slides, conversation between our presenters, with a live demo of the features, along with opportunities for you to ask questions of our experts. All attendees are on mute, so please submit your questions to the host through the WebEx chat feature. Without further ado, I'll pass this over to Patty McDonald, who will begin today's presentation. Patty? Thank you, Brenda. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Patty McDonald. I am the Director of Product Management for SchoolNet. Today's presenters are myself, um, Dean Shoffley, and Steve Gross, who are members of our product team. Jill Taylor is also on the line and will be available to be tracking a lot of the questions. Um, that will be coming in, and then we'll speak at the end of today's presentation. So keep those questions coming. We have a lot of very exciting functionality we're going to demonstrate today. And we will pause after each uh, section to make sure we answer those questions. So without further ado, I just want to give you a high-level introduction to our 20.1 release. This is our mid-year release. We release SchoolNet twice a year. Um, uh, we do a, a, a .o release, which is our back-to-school release, and a mid-year release. And given the time of year and, and um, school calendars, we have been rolling this release out uh, since the beginning of January, and all of our customers should be up on this uh, version of SchoolNet um, by the end of the uh, month. And as a reminder, uh, every customer has their unique instance of SchoolNet, and we coordinate with our school net leads at each of our districts and states to schedule these deployments. So, um, so that if some folks don't have 20.1 yet, um, you should be getting it shortly. So we continue to invest in um, expanding our data and reporting capabilities. We're very excited to show you a new assessment comparison report. This will provide better insights into student performance. It is a highly uh, requested type of report as it enables uh, districts and states to really uh, roll up a lot of data into a really nice um, set of data points to uh, administer and analyze and really see a bigger picture of assessments and activities. Uh, we've made some user experience improvements to our student list to make that uh, more easily view student-specific information with fewer clicks. And we also made some um, uh, subtle enhancements to our analysis spreadsheet, but ones that would provide a lot of time saving for folks that use those capabilities. Uh, we also continue to invest in our online assessment capabilities. We have additional item types enhanced to support all or none scoring models, and this will uh, uh, provide better support for measuring student critical thinking skills and more flexibility in how you score online assessments. Uh, we've made some user experience enhancements. You'll see that's a common thread as uh, we are always trying to improve our user experience. And we are going to streamline our manual scoring page, which we introduced in our 20.0 release. Uh, we have the ability to verify the score calculations when previewing items and assessments. And then finally, for those who manage assessment content, uh, whether in your district or with a third-party um, uh, assessment authoring uh, company, we have a more flexible assessment item QTI import enhancement capability. Um, so we're very excited about those as well. So without further ado, I'd like to transition to a live demo. And I'm going to pass the ball to Steve Gross who is a member of our uh, product management team, and he's going to demonstrate all, uh, some of our um, reporting capabilities. So I'm going to pause uh, my sharing and make that transition right now. Okay. And Steve, I have given you presenter rights. Uh, thank you very much, Patty. I see that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and then I'll ask one other question. I see that the, it's, that, uh, the WebEx is glowing, so that does indicate to me that you can see it. But, Patty, you can see my screen, correct? I can see and hear you, so you're, you're good Perfect. To go. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, Patty. Um, I'm, as a former classroom teacher and school administrator myself, I'm really excited to demo the assessment comparison report that we've been working so hard, so, excuse me, so hard on, I'll release, as well as some great changes to our student list feature. Um, and I'm going to show those uh, items to you now. Uh, the first, the first uh, thing to note is that the assessment comparison report is uh, navigated to from our reporting, uh, a reporting module, which where most of the reporting uh, is available in SchoolNet now, and on, it's directly on the reporting dashboard. Before I get to actually creating the report, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on an area called Configure Dashboard. Now, you might not have access to this link uh, directly on, on your site. It is available to the highest level administrator um, it's the highest level system administrator. So if you're a system administrator at a school, you probably wouldn't see it. You'd need to be a system administrator at the highest level. Um, and uh, that could be the district, that could be a region, that could be a state, depending upon how your instance of SchoolNet is set up. But the reason that I want to come to this uh, uh, configure dashboard um, page is because we have a tremendous amount of uh, flexibility with the assessment comparison report. Y as a user, as, as a customer, you have just about the ability to turn on or off any different piece of the assessment comparison report. If there are specific score types that you prefer over others and you only want to show those. Additionally, in the report, there are additional data um, additional data elements that you can use uh, as you are disaggregating your data, and you can turn those on or off as seen fit by your district. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of something I'm really excited. I keep, I keep using those words, but it's true. Um, we have an area here called column display name, and I'm going to give you an example of what you might use this for. So the school district where I personally live uh, has a separate name for gifted. They happen to call it PACE. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave gifted turned on, but I'm going to change the custom display name to say PACE so that as I build an assessment comparison report for you to see, you'll see the name PACE uh, instead of gifted specifically for the assessment comparison report. At the end of my presentation, I'm going to show you some things about the student list report, and there are some configurations for that. Um, I'll just show you here as long as I'm on that page, but I'll explain to you where those, where those are uh, when I'm there at the end. So since I made a, a change that I'm really interested in showing you, I'm going to go ahead and save that change. And I should be taken back to the uh, reporting dashboard. So I'm going to get started now with actually building an assessment comparison report. The first thing to note is that the assessment comparison report can be used at any scope level, and I have uh, a WebEx um, thing on top of my screen here, but uh, I don't think that you see it as a customer uh, looking at my screen. And so you can also pick between multiple years, and hopefully I was able to show that with, uh, with this WebEx piece over the top. Um, I'm personally today in the demo going to demonstrate the assessment comparison report at the school level because there's some great features that show comparison upstream and I, if I show the report at the, at the top level you won't see that um, but I also thought showing it at the school level is maybe a little bit more common than at the teacher level at the section level but you can run it there as well. So uh, there's something brand new on the reporting dashboard and that is this ability to check uh, check boxes for the tests that you want to create. So we're on a fake server here. It's a demo fake, sitter, uh, fake server. And I went ahead and created a fall, winter, and spring 10th grade math test. Um, and I kind of faked in the data for it. Um, but we're going to use that uh, as an example in this assessment comparison report. So I went ahead and I checked those boxes. At the bottom, there's an option to clear your selection and kind of start over if you want. Um, th that's important if you're, you know, switching between school years. Sometimes it's hard to remember everything that you've checked. This might say more numbers if you are checking things in other years. So you can clear what you're working from and start over. And then on the right-hand side, once you're ready with the assessments that you want to compare, go ahead and click Compare Assessments. At that point, you are taken to a setup menu. Let me see if I can move this WebEx. There we go. Perfect. Um, I was able to move this WebEx box that was uh, in front of some uh, part of my screen. 
Um, so there's a lot of different configurations before we get to the physical report. Uh, there's four different um, types of scoring uh, that you can look at with the assessment comparison report. There's average score, average raw score, students proficient, and score group. I'm going to choose two of those, uh, average score and score group. Uh, this column, students proficient, on the dashboard, there's already configurations if your district doesn't like that to disable that. If you have that disabled on, uh, on your school in that instance, uh, this will be unchecked and not available um, for, for, every, for everyone. You, you can turn it off um, in that capacity. So we have the three tests that I chose. And then we have additional data elements that you can use in your report. I'm going to choose three of them. I'm going to choose gender race, and pace. Remember I changed the word gifted to pace because the district that I happen to live in, that's what they call gifted, they call it pace. And because this is the one that was important to me as I'm building this report to show you a bunch of things, I'm going to actually drag and drop that to the front of my report because that's what I want. You can drag and drop the order here in any way that you want. Uh, it's important to note that lunch status is available to me because I have the permissioning in SchoolNet to see that. If I did not have the permissioning in SchoolNet to see that, I would not be able to run that on my report. The last piece uh, that is something that um, I spent a number of years on the client services team before I joined the product team, and that experience uh, helped me to bring uh, programs to the assessment comparison report. Uh, different customers that I've worked with over the years uh, found different types of programs that they would bring into SchoolNet, and by including that on this assessment comparison report, you're able to disaggregate the assessment comparison report by those programs. What this means is that on your system, your pro the programs will look very different than on this fake system. And I'll, while I'll go ahead and choose one so that you can see it, there's, this is fake data on this system, so it's not really the most useful information. Uh, but whatever it is that you use uh, for yourselves as a customer, whatever data you choose to load in as a program uh, will be available there. All right, so now without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Generate Report and the assessment comparison report takes over my screen. Um, there's a lot on the report. We're going to spend some time going through it. The first fun thing that I mentioned is, remember I said that um, I was going to do this at a school level so you could see some of the roll-up? Well, if I hover over any of the charts for any of the tests, you'll see the roll-up that I'm referring to. You'll see the school listed there, um, the specific school, and then the district on top of it. If I was at the section level, this would roll up and show the section, the school, and the district. Again, this is fake data. I took it with you know 700 students by loading the loading the data in. So the data, is, for the most part, is from this school, and that's why the numbers are fairly similar. Uh, this this little uh, popover also shows me the full test name, the number of items on the test, the average score, and the students that took the test based on the filters that I have right now, which, which are none. So these are all the students that took this test at the school. Uh, up here at the top, um, the different score, uh, score, score, scoring uh, choices that I chose to use this report with each show up as a different tab. There's a possibility of four. I chose to show you the score groups one because the popover is very different for this one, right? Um, when you're showing things by score group, it breaks down what are those score groups, um, what uh, percentages make them up, and then while, while, the, while the chart does, does show things um, uh, percentage-wise, it, it's nice to actually see the numbers instead of having to guess uh, which ones are there. Uh, so I'm actually, I think it's a, personally, for what I'm going to show, uh, I like to do it with average score. So uh, I can get rid of that chart at the top if I want with that nice little arrow, but the chart and the table below are connected together. And so anything that I do, any filtering that I do on the table below will come back up and that will affect the chart at the top. And I'm going to start by doing some filtering. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to filter these results for only PACE students that are... Uh, um, I guess I'll choose female, right? So we have uh, only female students that are in the PACE program. And you can see that dropped us down to 55 students. And you might notice that the numbers on this chart at the top changed. And so the numbers on the chart at the top now only reflect that specific 
um, that specific filtering that I have done. And depending upon what uh, additional data elements you choose, you can filter filter things down as much as you want. Maybe I'll choose to unfilter that and I'll look at pay students in general and you can see those numbers change and uh, maybe instead of students that are in PACE, I only want to look at the students that are not in PACE, right? Um, I can choose to, to filter any different way that I want. Because there's so much filtering, we have a nice clear all filters button, uh, both at the top and on the, ta the, the table below, uh, because it's very possible you can get to filtering all sorts of different things, and all of a sudden you say to yourself, huh, what am I really looking at? Sometimes clearing out the filter and starting from scratch is, uh, is a nice feature. There's one more type of filtering that I'm going to go ahead and show um, that when I was a classroom teacher would have helped me to compare uh, data for different groups of students, not by uh, additional data elements, but by the actual test results themselves. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to search for students, oops, excuse me, uh, that got from and there's something wrong with my mouse here, so I'm going to type, uh, type in this way. Uh, so there's students that got from 40 to 50 percent just on the fall test. And so when I filter that, that brings us down from 790 some students, as I recall, down to 260 students scored between 40 and 50 percent on the fall test. So we can do a comparison and see how those 260 students that scored between a 40 and 50 in the fall, how did they do in the winter, and how did they do in the spring? So this assessment comparison report can allow you to uh, disaggregate data in a lot of different ways uh, based on your needs. Um, very similar to a lot of the new reports that we're using in the reporting module, there's different ways that you can compare those results. You can compare them by grade, you can compare them by subgroup, um, and uh, you know, lots, th that's fairly standard for a lot of our new reports. I'm going to go ahead and clear our filters so that I don't confuse us um, when we look at uh, the exports that are available. So there's two different exports that are available on the assessment comparison report. The first one is a visible data export, and that shows me basically just the table at the bottom of the screen. In fact, um, once this pulls up, and I had another Excel file open on my computer, excuse me. Uh, once I pull this up, and if I expand it out to, to, the, to the right here, you can see a lot of the columns are exactly the same. And it is exactly what that export says. It's basically the visible data that you see here. You notice there's a different type of uh, extract available there as well. And that is a student data view. Um, so we'll go ahead and we will um, run that one. And when I run that student data view extract, we actually get um, all of the students that were in this report. So there's 794 minus the header row at the top. That's 793 students. And we get all of the, all of the fields uh, for that student. So we get their, you know, their pace field, their gender, their race, all the way down to how did they do on the different, on the different tests. Um, and such. And so uh, that report actually runs as a background task, because you can imagine if you're running that at the district level, that's quite a bit of data that you might be working on. So when you run, uh, when you run a student data uh, report, and even the visible data report, they run as background tasks in case your assessment comparison report is, is looking at a tremendous amount of data. Uh, so there's a couple more features that I want to show. I know I've been showing a lot, but there's a lot to show about this report. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click Edit this report, and I am going to pull away the winter assessment so that we have just a fall and spring assessment. And you'll see why I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this report, and I'm going to say 117 Steve Demo Fall Spring 10th Grade Math. All right, I'll put in a description. Uh, personally, I added a category called assessment comparison, so I am going to save this report um, in there. All right, so we're all squared away. Um, my report has saved. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side, and I'm going to look at my saved reports. 
inside my saved reports, you, you can see uh, that we have the 117 Steve demo fall spring 10 math. Um, however, you also see right below it, there's a different report that is already there. In fact, I built this last week. There is a 10th grade math fall, winter, spring for the demo. And you might see that this says that it has been published and it's been contextualized. Well, what does that mean? There's, and I also built that differently from the one today so that you can see how this works. If I click on the fall or the winter or spring test, this is something you're used to seeing in the um, reporting and the reporting dashboard, the reporting module. But if you have published an assessment comparison report, there's a new tab that's available, and that pulls up um, the published assessment comparison report. Now, what I want to do is I want to take uh, an opportunity to actually publish the test that I saved today. Go ahead and click publish because there's some neat options that we have included um, in publishing a report. If you're a user that has access to publish a report, not all users do, uh, we have this new checkbox that allows you to include this report on the reporting dashboard. That's where I was just showing it to you. And then a further checkbox that allows you to include the report all the way down at the child levels. And so what that means is if you published it, the report at the district, and published it to all the child levels, every school would see that. So if it's a true district-wide report, um, that's important to do. Now you can see my demo says that has also been published and contextualized. So if I go back to the reporting dashboard and I choose the spring test, we should see now in comparison report, we see two different reports that are available. Um, so that is uh, pretty much for the most part everything that I wanted to show you with the assessment comparison report. Before I move on uh, to showing the student list changes, um, were there any questions that came up or anything at the top of, top of anyone's mind that they'd like to go over? No questions at this time. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I'm actually going to switch schools to show you the next feature. Kind of did this uh, thinking about an entirely different environment. And I am going to go to a specific teacher. Um, this is uh, fake data, so we have a lot of teachers whose last name is Old. And I did this as Daniela Old. And I'm going to go to the Student Reports tab. I'm going to switch this to math just because those, uh, those tests that I just ran were math. Uh, so this student report list is something that you should be used to seeing. Um, however, we've changed it to make it a lot more user friendly uh, for, uh, for the end user. Uh, specifically, the first thing that might jump out at you is that we have flags for special education, gifted, and I believe there's also a flag for LEP. Um, but uh, none of the students in this teacher's uh, uh, class um, is LEP. Uh, on this demo site. Uh, we also have the date of birth and the phone number. We did uh, the same webinar last week, and what was really exciting is the student Henry, um, the webinar was before 115, so this was a purple, a purple, it showed up in purple because Henry's birthday was coming up, and I think as I looked at this this morning before this demo again, I think if we scroll down, yep, there's a student whose birthday is next week. And I think back to my days in the classroom, that'd be nice you know, to kind of see that pulled out um, so that I know that beforehand. Uh, the student's phone number, which when I was a classroom teacher would have always, the home phone number is always something that, I, that it was nice to have at my fingertips. Um, to the right of that, you have some attendance information. And then there is a nice recent test trend that can show you a lot of the different tests that the, that the student has taken. I'm going to actually switch this, and instead of showing all tests, I'm going to switch to a specific test. And when I do that, obviously I get the data for that specific test. Um, and sorry, I, I gave every student in this class 100%. <laughs> I kind of gave each different class a different grade. Um, but then to the right of that, the reason I switched is there's some nice reports that always existed inside the student profile, but now you can get to um, from from uh, the, student, the student reports. And if I click on them, they open in a new tab. 
So it takes me directly to the report that I was asking about, um, and I still didn't lose the student reports page here. Additionally, all of the different uh, profile pages are available here. So if I was interested in looking at um, the student's programs, I could click that, and again, it opens in another tab so I don't uh, lose what I was working on. At the very beginning of my presentation, I showed you the configure dashboard, and I showed you some things specific to uh, the assessment comparison report. But then at the end, I mentioned, hey, uh, I want to show this to you because I'm on the dashboard. And there was a place where you could configure if these different tests are available in these drop-down menus, or if these different programs, or uh, excuse me, uh, pages from the profile are available in these drop downs. So if your district wanted to configure that, somebody could do that from the report, uh, excuse me, the configure dashboard. And I notice I've reached my time and I have gotten all the way through the two different pieces that I wanted to show. Were there any other questions before I pass the ball to Dean? One question. Am I able to use prior year's tests on the assessment comparison report? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, you can. If I choose that I want this report from this year and I switch to the previous years, I don't know what data is on this um, for this teacher. There we go. But, but there was some here. Um, so I can choose one uh, test from one year and another test uh, from another year. Yep. So I can do that. All right. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'll go ahead and I'll pass the ball to Dean. There we go, Dean. I can see your screen. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Um, so a couple of things I want to show today that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, the first one is we have updated the item types in SchoolNet that will now support our All or None scoring model. All or None scoring model says that I must get all of the correct answers selected in order to receive points on the test. So we've updated that for the inline matching drag and drop, click stick, click drop, and hotspot multiple item types. Previously, it was only available for checklist and gap match. The UI that we've leveraged is going to be exactly the same as it was for checklist and gap match. That includes how to search for specific items with that scoring model, um, the reporting of it, all that sort of stuff. So let me just go to an item here, and I'll quickly create a drag and drop item and just show you uh, how this is going to look. So I'll quickly select my subject, my grade level or grade range, a standard, and I'm just going to quickly create a content just to keep it simple. And I'll create my target containers just to keep it simple. And as I scroll down, you'll see now I have the ability to select the scoring model that I want to use. There's the existing default scoring model, but we also have this one here, which is all or none scoring, and allows me to just assign one point to the entire question. So I'll go through and select correct answers, A, B, and D, and we've got our item created. So one of the other things we've done this release is within TestNav, a new Calculate Scores button. And this Calculate Scores button is going to be available for previewing an item, as well as previewing a test. And it's going to allow me to show you how all or none scoring is really going to work. So if I take A and drop it into container 1, B and drop it in container 2, and D drop it in container 3, if I hit this Calculate Score button, it's going to tell me that this answer is worth 1 out of 1 point. If I remove D and I put C in here, so now I have the first container correct, the second container correct, but the third container incorrect. If I calculate my score, since I don't have all three containers correct, I am not eligible to receive any points. On top of the all or none scoring, we've also updated our pattern scoring that's available for tasks. Pattern scoring says I must get the first activity correct in order to be eligible for points on the second activity. We've enhanced that now to allow for inline matching, drag and drop, click stick, click drop, hotspot multiple, item type scored with all or none scoring to now be the first activity in the test. So if you have a task and you've got the first activity as a inline item and it is scored with all or none scoring, 
that task is now eligible to be scored using pattern scoring if you so desire. Any questions on the all or none scoring? Or the calculate score button? Let me just open up the chat here and make sure I can see this. Okay, uh, moving on. So uh, the quick score page, um, we've done some changes on this. Now this is gonna be a little bit potentially confusing there's the quick score page that's going to be uh, available in 20.1, but we're also going to be releasing a maintenance release soon after 20.1 with some further enhancements streamlining the manual score page. We've heard a lot of people uh, want it a more streamlined uh, interface um, from what we had. We've listened, we've implemented that. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Um, but the existing manual score page, which is in currently 20.1, you have your questions on the left-hand side, and then we had this student list here. And as I would go through, I could go through and score the students as we kind of go through the test. So with this upcoming maintenance release, and after talking to a lot of our customers, we have really streamlined this manually scorable tab. So I'm just gonna switch over to another system. This by students test tab is going to remain exactly the same as it is. Um, one of the updates we have made for this is if you um, capture student responses or teacher comments on answer sheets, when those comments are scanned into the system, we will show those on the student test tab now or manually scorable question tab. So now if I go over to the manual scorable question tab, and again, this is going to be available in an upcoming hotfix or maintenance release, sorry. You can see the first thing we've done is we used to have the question labels here. Everything was preceded, or all the numbers were preceded with the word question. We've stripped out the question, and we're trying to make as much green real estate here as we can. So the first thing is we've got the question collapsed. I can expand it. I can see what the question is. We're no longer showing the passage. We're just showing the question content. I can then go through, I can expand all the students, I can collapse all the students. If students have scores entered for them, they're already collapsed. Only the students that I need to score are expanded. Another thing we've done to increase the real estate available to us is we have stripped out the um, teacher comments field. So right here usually is where teacher comments would field would show. If I want to show it, I can select show comments and I can enter in comments here on the student's response or I can choose not to and again, just increase that screen real estate. So now I can go through, see the question and score all of these as I go through. If I want to view the student's full response here, I can select this button. I can see anything that they may have highlighted within the question content. I can also view if the students added any notes to the question uh, through TestNet, I can see that right here. So we're still giving you as much information as we can on how the student uh, responded to the question. Um, and in this case, you can see by hitting the view full response in the student notes. If you scroll down, you can see we've created more of a vertical uh, linear possession, uh, procession. So here now I'm going to go on to question four. Here's my student that is still needing to be scored. So we really tried to streamline the uh, bimanually scorable question tab. Any questions on that? Okay, the final thing I'm going to show now is uh, quite a big chunk of work we've done around the um, QTI import. So QTI import is a method in which you can get item banks or tests into SchoolNet. And those item banks and those items and that QTI package must be formatted in such a way that we can consume it. It has uh, specific fields that are going to be required for SchoolNet. And that's been around uh, for quite some time, but now we've enhanced the functionality quite, quite a bit. So if I select this QTI import link, and this is only going to be available for your kind of your sys operators, your leadership. You can see here we've got 
uh, a new UI, a new interface, where I can either drag files onto here, drop folders, and what those folders can be folders, and I'll, if I open up this one, it can be a folder like this that contains many zip files. So if I open this up, you can see we've got a few zip files here. So I can drag this folder, drop it on, and you can see alt um, automatically we list out the items that are in that folder and we show the progress of them being uploaded to Schoolnet and then validated and then imported into the system. If you didn't want to do that drag and drop, you could also hit this and you could choose files or folders from your computer. So the first thing we'll notice is we've got this warning here in green, QTI demo script.txt. If I expand that out, I can see that we've got a error. Only general zip file types are supported for the QTI upload. So because this is a TXT file, it's not going to be supported. It's going to come up with some problems. Uh, in this case, it's not going to allow us to import into the system. You can see as these progress, this one's being validated in SchoolNet right now. Also on this page, as that's being validated, we've got, you can show your current activity, you can show the uploading ones, you can show the ones that are processing, I can show all. Uh, we can look at this one that's been completed with errors. So this is a test. If I expand out, I can see all of the item goods that were uh, included within the package. I can expand this out, and I can see that I got a warning. The test with this identifier already exists in SchoolNet, and we're going to update that test. So what this really means is I've already ran through this package once. I've uploaded it into the system, and now I'm doing it again. The identifiers are exactly the same, so the system's just going to go ahead and update that already imported in test. Um, and you can see here, if you go to this, these buttons up here, you've got your import log, uh, which shows all those uh, from the uploader always. But we've got this imported test properties. And this is a pretty powerful uh, section, I think, for tests that have been imported into the system. From here, I can actually edit some of the test properties. Uh, I can change the test name. I can change the subject, the grade level, or the test category or the preferred standards document. Back to the uploader, I saw one of these was finishing, or I go to the import log, one of these finished. Um, you can look, this one's completed with warnings. Uh, we expand this out. As this loads, I can see that I got eight with warnings. So eight of the items were uploaded with warnings. If I expand this out, I can see one of the more AB standards squids could not be found in SchoolNet. So what this means is, within this package, they had a bunch of standards uh, associated with each item. When we imported into SchoolNet, all of those standards for each item didn't exist in SchoolNet. We still imported in the item, and we'll import it in line to the standards that are included in this SchoolNet system. But we're giving you a warning letting you know that there were standards associated with the items in the QTI package that don't exist in SchoolNet. So that's what that warning means. And you can see how this all just kind of processes through. On the uploader, everything is done. Um, we can look at this one. This one had an error in it. Uh, there's one warning, but there's all these errors here. So one of the things with a passage, if we look, there's no title for the passage. So within the QTI, the each passage that's been configured doesn't contain a title. That's going to cause a problem. In SchoolNet, that is a required field. It's easily um, and clearly noted here the problem that we had. Uh, any further questions on the QTI import? Okay. So that's what I had to demo. I will stop sharing and pass the presenter role back to Patty. Thanks, everyone, for the time. Um, so I just wanted to um, 
uh, come back and, and show you a couple things before we give may, uh, hopefully some time back into your day. I'm just going to, uh, I have controls again. I'm going to share my desktop um, and go back to our presentation briefly and then show you a couple of really great resources you can leverage for further uh, learning about the release. So other notable um, enhancements um, I just want to point out. This, I had mentioned the student analysis spreadsheet. I thought this would be a little more simple, efficient to show on a screen. We've updated the maximum number of columns to 35. We've made that configuration um, setting uh, as we have been deploying um, the 20.1 um, uh, application, so you, should, you may already have seen this new capability. Uh, we've also updated the SchoolNet Rich Text Editor and Equation Editor options. Um, the Rich Text Formatting and Equation Editor options have been separated. This gives you a little more flexibility on the, um, the, the student experience when delivering an assessment. Both the, in uh, the Item Online Student Response options and the Test Item Defaults have been updated with this, um, this configuration as well. Or options, sorry, should be a better term. We've done a couple of other enhancements based on how our customers are using SchoolNet and requests. We now have a forced publication link. This will save um, users time to um, really, uh, uh, who can edit a test, and it's really given for permissions that are a more senior level. Uh, this will allow users to republish a test from TestAv without making, having to make any changes to the test. So there was a couple of steps in order to initiate that republishing. So, Hopefully this will save some folks time. We do caution this should never be uh, initiated while students are taking the test. Um, and really, um, that's why we limit this operation to folk, uh, district administrators that have sort of the power to publish assessments. Um, student type ahead search improvements. So um, this will account for students with multiple first names or last names. And then web and reading levels are displayed on search results pages. Um, just KPI dashboard enhancements, um, that is a heavily used um, part of the application uh, for some of districts, but there is now a grade level filter on the KPI dashboard that will filter all KPIs on the dashboard by grade level selected, so just a way of slicing and dicing the KPIs a little more efficiently. And then the grade filter selection from the dashboard will persist when viewing individual KPI details. So, um, so you can filter and then really dig into the data a little bit more. We also have a filter under the technical settings section of your KPI configuration page that allows a system operator to associate an associated NCES subject with a KPI. Um, this will control the teachers that are displayed on the KPI details page as well. So this was a um, heavily requested um, enhancement uh, in, in a different way of looking at a KPI and associating with these um, types of standards. NCS subjects, sorry, no. using all my correct words today. So I'm going to pause um, to see if there are any questions before we kind of remind folks on, on what we're, um, how you can get engaged in, in, in partnering with us on our next release. Any questions in the queue, um, Brenda? Oh. A couple questions. Could sure. you um, refresh us on when uh, 20.1 is being released? Sure. So we have a deployment schedule where we have released 20.1 already over the last past Fridays uh, to, um, to a subset of customers. We have additional customers being deployed this Friday. And then we have the, the remaining customers um, in deployment slots next Wednesday and Friday. And our client services project manager team will be both either communicating the specific date and details via our project manager. And if you don't have a project manager assigned, you will receive an email by the end of the week with the exact um, uh, details of your deployment. Um, I do also want to clarify, we have a few customers that have uh, opted not to take 20.1 yet, so uh, some of you may be on the call, uh, maybe in that scenario, we, we do track exceptions. And then the maintenance release that, uh, that Dean referenced with um, some of the additional enhancements to the manual score page, 
we are targeting early Jan uh, February for those capable to, capabilities to be released in a, ma a separate maintenance release. Okay, and um, how can I get a recording of this webinar? So uh, we, uh, we are recording this uh, live right now. Um, it's a good segue. Um, I do have um, where we will post it. So uh, we will get a recording from uh, Brenda of today's webinar. Uh, we will then convert it, uh, clean it up a little bit because we have some dead space at the beginning, and then we will post it to our SchoolNet YouTube channel. So that's one place that we post videos. And I just want to remind you of this resource. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's under, you can just search SchoolNet and it's, uh, you can find a, a playlist of growing um, videos. Uh, we do have um, some uh, school assessment comparison report. I, I mentioned that we had that score attest in SchoolNet um, that could go over some of those capabilities that uh, one of the um, uh, participants asked earlier. So uh, that's a great resource. An additional uh, opportunity to see this recording would be through our training management system. This is SchoolNet's uh, training site. Um, I know I clicked quickly out of it, uh, but this, um, this is, I'm logged in already, but I'll log out. But this is a site that just requires an email to access. And when you log in, it remembered me, there are videos, um, some of the same videos um, that we have on our YouTube channel um, and additional resources also, printables, uh, more robust training materials are also located on this site as well. So great question. Okay, and one last one. Um, how can I provide feedback on features um, that I'm interested in seeing? Great. And, um, and Jill, um, I was wondering maybe if you could take yourself on mute, maybe you could talk a little bit about that question. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so we uh, typically run uh, numerous feedback sessions throughout the year, which is usually about an hour-long session where we'll present an idea that we're thinking about development, potentially something with mock-ups that we've, we've kind of thought through a little bit more. We also conduct surveys um, throughout the year to let you know about kind of what's going on and what's upcoming. Um, these are all voluntary, so you would get an email stating that we're doing these feedback sessions and if you're interested or if you um, want to participate in a survey, the link, you could just use it. You don't have to participate if you don't want to. And just to get on the list that gets emailed out, um, if you can send me an email, my email address is on the screen. It's jilltaylor at pearson.com. And then we'll just put you on the list. You can come off that list at any time by just letting us know. Uh, but yeah, you can receive a couple of emails throughout the year with what we're working on. There are two things in the works right now um, that we're getting feedback, and that is item approval and also scheduling. So if either of those two topics interest you, feel free to send me a, an email, and I'll add you to the list. Great. Thank you, Jill. And uh, I'll keep this slide up for a little bit. I also have my email and a general SchoolNet uh, email and address um, as other ways of, of, of contacting us. Brenda, any additional questions in the, uh, in the queue? Those are all the questions that we have. Great. Well, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy schedule. Uh, I know this is a, is a busy time of year transitioning from the holidays. Um, I uh, appreciate your thoughtful questions, and thank you to our pre uh, presenters today, Dean and Steve, for showing us these great capabilities and Jill connecting us to future releases. We will close out the session now, and we'll be following up um, uh, with an email to everyone that registered with a link to the recording, as well as posting it to those locations that, um, that I mentioned today. Could take a few days, as I mentioned, we just like to clean up the video a little bit. Um, without further ado, thank you very much, and you all have a great rest of your day.